Our Wednesday webinar series. I'm Garrett Anderson, the Director of Marketing for Contract Furnishings Mart. Thank you again for joining us. Today we're here in Hillsboro. It's a gloomy day, but we're going to get through it. We have a very exciting topic again. It's going to be countertops. So we're talking counter intelligence. I think that's a great way to describe it because really there's a lot of misconceptions out there and we're going to talk about what's available in the general process to getting a solid surface product in your home. Uh, one housekeeping note, we have some very exciting news that our Tacoma store, our, our, sorry, our Tacoma showroom, the city of Tacoma has deemed construction essential again. So today is our first day open again as a showroom. All of our Washington stores have been fully staffed and supporting our, our customers. Uh, but now we can have some live people in the showroom. So we're really excited about that. We're hoping the rest of our Washington stores have that opportunity here soon. Uh, but we are doing still everything that we can. I'm sure we're all fatigued with COVID-19 talk, but uh, it is very important to stay safe. Uh, we're doing everything that we can for our own staff and to keep you safe as well. So we do have a, a measuring stick of six feet to keep me and my counterpart here today uh, separated. We're very lucky to have Ms. Amy Bright. She is our Caesar Stone rep. She's been in the industry for quite some time. And so not only is she an expert on Caesar Stone, the quartz manufacturer in particular, but also natural stone and the various different products that we've seen. So uh, we're gonna talk a lot about pros and cons, trends, really the education process behind selecting the right countertop for you. It's not just about price, it's not just about color, there are many other factors that you need to consider. And really that's what we're here for as a company, as CFM, as we focus on products and we find the right solutions for your needs. So uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Amy Bright. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself your history in this game and kind of start diving into the evolution of solid surface countertops. Well, I have stayed in the product side of things because I love what things have come from and where they've gone to. And I have been in probably every aspect of the interior design community from wall coverings to now solid surface quartz. But I did start my career um, in uh, a showroom and really at that time, Oregon was a place where most of our design clientele had to go to either San Francisco or Seattle in the early 80s to get any kind of product. When I came back from New York in 96, granite slabs had started to enter our market. I worked for Oregon Tile and Marble, and I actually was learning a lot from the processes of people selecting products and sort of the advent of better education on why these products work and why they don't work. So with that, my, that was the nexus of my design background in natural stone. And as I've gone forward, I've been in the porcelain world for a very long time and have seen us go from stamp print technology into a inkjet technology, which gave us a truer visual to through body, through color, which gives us dimension. And the closer we can get to nature without the anomalies of nature and the drawbacks that Mother Nature provides for some clients who don't want things to age or change, I always tell my clients, I'm aging in place and so we will natural stone. It's part of what nature does. So when I started with granite, because really we had granite and some marble, but we don't have, didn't have the traction on marble that we have now. Granite is a very masculine, very intense, highly colored product. Inside granite, you'll see little garnet crystals and sometimes bigger crystals. Those are quartz and rose quartz, these beautiful crystalline uh, products that you see in natural stone are part of what has then come down the pipeline to be used into the man-made and synthetic products. So, Granite sort of came off the gate. Fabricators were learning the trade. We had more and more fabricators uh, taking control of the business in the Portland marketplace. But not everybody wanted that look. And really, we had come out of a Formica, you know, Wilson Art background, this laminate solid surface, the only way you could do something without grout joints. So then people became more global and started traveling started seeing things that they liked in other countries. One of my jokes is, is when I'm talking to clients, I say to them, why are you picking that white marble countertop? And they say, well, it was in the south of France. It was absolutely beautiful. I said, yes, and do you remember it had oil stains? 
wine stains. They actually used it to make chocolate and bread dough and it was probably grooved out. Oh, I forgot about that. You're right. So I understand why people want something that's a little softer, has a little bit of organic movement, maybe not the color and value of a granite. As an example here, when we first got into some granites that were closer to marbles, cashmere white was one of the first. But because it had all these tiny little crystals, it was a glacé, it, it was a marble, or excuse me, a granite that had these finer crystalline uh, particulates in it. And so it needed to be sealed. So now we went from something that was technically not, but, but at that point bulletproof, because you could cut on it, you could put hot things on it, but it's still stained. And so with people drawing away from granite, liking the looks of marble, but not wanting the maintenance, we started to see this advent of man-made products. Caesar Stone was the first to come out with a engineered quartz product. This is quartz. Quartz are the crystalline, as I said, rocks that you see in granite. And I wanna be really clear, and we're gonna talk about this again, there's a difference between quartz, which is these man-made products, and quartzite. Quartzite is a natural, organic, and it is actually the precursors to granite. So it is very, very dense and hard. So Corian also was out in the market at that time. It's with pure resin. It came out with a product named Zodiac, which had a little bit more of this organics and had a few particulates in it. But those in 1987 were the two choices you had other than the real thing. So when I'm talking to clients and they have five kids and a dog and a full-time job, I know that when I'm talking to them, there's going to be certain things that they're going to need this countertop to perform without them having to monitor their family. If your child left a lemon wedge on this marble countertop, it would etch. And it would have nothing to do with whether you sealed it or not. One of my analogies is if you buff your nails, you'll notice that it stays nice and shiny for about a day. Those are the same calciums that exist in marbles. Granite, on the other hand, will never reduce. You could, you're gonna dull your knives before you dull the finish. So as we made these man-made materials, we had to be really um, cognizant of what they can and can't do. By the time 2008 rolled around, we had about 200 quartz manufacturers in the United States of America. And they came from all over the world. And they had various components from sand and glass to real quartz, porcelain came out onto the market. The Italians have been using solid slabs of porcelain for a while. It hadn't gotten as much traction in the United States. It is still a thinner material and these solid slabs of porcelain really are more topically printed because they don't have the depth capability that these more dimensional three centimeter stones have. So with that being said, we want to talk to you then about different uses, different maintenance benefits. So with products such as granite, real marble, you need to do what's called sealing. And sealings are a wipe on application but many stones, um, soapstone is an example, it's once a day for a month, it's once a month for a year, it's once a year for six years. You need to seal, 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 because these things are so porous, they're like sponges. And sealant only really deals with the top millimeter of the stone, and that gets washed off as you just actually work through your day. So sealings don't last. So as people said, well, I don't really wanna be beholden, to my countertop, these solid surface materials became more important in, in our interior design choices because they gave us more choices with less maintenance, less care, less, fewer of the attributes that kept us from making the choices that we wanted in our home. And for most of us, a countertop's a one, once in a lifetime choice until you move. So, um, so, so really, I mean, you, you highlight a couple of things uh, 
I hope you guys all remembered all those things about the history of Stone. Don't be a Write all that down. This will be recorded, so you might have to listen again. Uh, but but really, you know, Natural Stone is, is where the game was for a number of years, and we had different trends. Um, there are certainly some, some downsides. I think that's what has uh, made Quartz so popular is that easy maintenance attribute, right? Uh, just being, tell us about Quartz and how it's made that makes it non-porous versus the Natural Stone that is porous and requires sealing. Okay. And uh, not only the look and care, but also we all are very familiar with the sustainability model. And as sustainability became more and more of a conversation, that's another component of why you choose what you choose. Where are these things extracted? How much uh, carbon does it take for these things to come and get transported over here and brought out of the ground? So there's so many layers to why you make choices and they're different for everybody. But the truth of it is, is that natural stone is really just all these rocks that are smashed together. And the tinier the rock, the more particulate you have, the more ways you have for wine and oils and things to come in and bleed through and leave stains in your counter. So with the advent of quartz, there are a lot of different components out in the market. And Caesar Stone started with true quartz and resin. We're 95% rocks to resin. We're very considered about what quartz we use. We're big into purity. We have really driven the sustainable market since we started. We were born just blocks from Roman ruins. And so Israel had huge mandates for us. And the United States has huge mandates now in the interior design world and what gets specified and what doesn't. So how are these things made? Because many of these products now are using other components such as sand and glass. And if they're using sand and glass, do you have to seal them? Do you have to care for them? So every single product has different pros and cons. And sometimes you just choose it because it's the prettiest one and you love it. And you're willing to do what's needed to be done to make that perform for you. So again, qualify your purchases by the componentry that's in it and really ask the hard questions about your life. What do you need it to do and what will aggravate you? And if you are okay with what you chose, go for it. So considering our current landscape with COVID-19, are there any changes that we need to make in how we're cleaning and maintaining our countertops? So I know with natural stone, obviously you need to use something that's pH neutral. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these, you know, bleaches and certain things, not obviously good with natural stone. Can we use those with quartz? Yes, mine you can. Okay. Um, in fact, Windex has ammonia in it. Uh, Barkeeper's Friend is also a high sanitizer. Um, we are sort of, uh, very happy to be in this arena right now because it begs the question, how do you clean? I was a green cleaner user. I'm still a Simple Green fan. Um, but we have found that Simple Green with chlorophylls in it can sometimes change grouts um, in colorant, and it is not killing the COVID virus. So what can you do? Again, you need to make sure with the product that you choose, with the cleaners that you want to utilize that you feel safest for your family, that they can take that. Because if you use any of those products on a real marble, it will be matte by the time you're done with the week. And uh, so, well, so speaking, again, speaking of matte, there are some different finishes available, not only on natural stone, but also on the coarse products. Uh, you have the high gloss polish, which is probably most abundant, right? Just because that is easiest to clean and wipe down. We also have matte, suede, textured finishes. Let's walk us through some of those. Okay, I jump in on this because you gotta clean your counters. That's my rule. Everyone's like, something's cleaner and easier to clean than the other, and it's not true. If I run my fingers over that, you'd see that. If I left something shiny, like an oil, on a matte finish, you'd see that. And so, if you're using, if you have different textures and nuances on top of a different texture nuance, you're gonna see it. So how do I easily clean and care for different products? Again, you've got rugged finishes. You've got concrete finishes. You have matte and honed finishes. 
you have gloss finishes. So you have lots of choices out there, but again, as Garrett said, when you come to cleaning it and you want to make sure that this product is going to remain as you purchased it, you need to know the, the downside and the upside because everything has a downside and everything has an upside. There's no perfect solution. You just need to do what's best for you. Do you know when they're going to come out with that perfect solution? I am the perfect that. solution, but yeah. yeah. No. So <laughs> I, I know from personal experience, we have a, a lighter color quartz and a matte finish. And that can kind of grab the oils from your, your fingers yeah. a little bit more, right? It's just that subtle texture, so that could be a consideration. And color. Like, I re I, I'm, I'm 60 in May. And I remember when we had white vinyl on the floor, and everyone hated white vinyl because you could see absolutely everything that's on it. And then we went to black, and everyone saw everything on black. I, I remind people that their black car and their black cashmere sweater and their, you know, all these really hard colors against something else are going to be seen. But they look if, really good when they're They outside. do. Yeah. Uh, but if they're matte and you're going and you're putting something shiny on it, you'll see that differential. If you've ever tried to match whites, it's probably my clearest example because it's just different enough. <laughs> so, so what other trends are we seeing? I know that we've obviously seen a huge trend in quartz based on the natural stone trends we see Correct. on HGTV and what people are, are just generally looking at across the country. So natural stone looks like those lighter marbles are still very popular, but you mentioned to me earlier that some of the darker and color tones are coming back in. Right? Yes. So kind of what, what's the landscape now? What are people looking for? So I was saying to Garrett earlier that the interesting things about trends is they start from socioeconomic conditions and politics. And we've been black and white for a long time. And so we are going to go vacillate between these two dynamics. But because people are feeling more humanitarian these days, color is being introduced. You're starting to see on house colored cabinetry. You're starting to see different textural finishes. People want the nuances of organic texture. We're all probably, I would, I'm gonna put us all under the umbrella of all being tactile by nature. Human beings have to touch things, and so a lot of times my clients make choices because of how something feels, or how something looks to them, or it's the right color to go with some other choices that they've made. But again, the um, these things, it's a mat, it's honed, and if your kid dropped Cheerios on that, they'd see it. If they spread peanut butter on it, you'd see it on any of these finishes. The question still bodes, how do you clean it? How do you care for it? And with these darker finishes, so you have, uh, if anyone goes back far enough to honed black absolute granite, which was not a granite, it's a carbon, you put your hand on it, you're gonna see moisture, right? But then it dries off. But you are going to see things that have different finishes on top of different finishes. Now, one cool new thing that we haven't had for a while is an exterior rated quartz. Yes. And you have something really exciting that was just showcased at KBiz this year. Tell us about this line, how many colors are offered, and why is this line from Caesar Stone okay outside when others are not? So we've been working on this technology for a long time because it's probably been one of the most common questions I've been asked by the design community, can I put this outside? Now you have the advent of nano doors, huge, you know, continuous living from interior to exterior. Sometimes uh, we've got full wrap windows. The sun is an angry beast. His UV radiation will change colors of everything from your wall color to your cabinetry, to your wood floors, to your drapes. So because UV changes are inherent just in life, we really had to qualify these products before we put them out into the market. So we just launched Solaris at KBiz. We have three colors. The two um, that I wanted to showcase just because they're different enough. We have the Frosty Carina, which has marble-like movement through it for people who want that uh, movement. It's called Palm Shade in the Solaris collection. And then we have two concrete colors that are both uh, midday and clear skies. They are medium tonalities because if it's too light, 
or too white, it's too bright. And if it's too dark, it's gonna absorb the sun and it'll be too hot for you to touch. So with all of these products, there are heat ratings. And with the products that we're talking about in the quartz arena, most things can't take heat over 250 degrees. Ours, we say 400. But the activity of taking your hot kettle off the stove and putting it on the same place over and over again is going to cause what we call expansion and contraction and can cause a fissure in any of the man-made materials. Oftentimes natural stones will be affected the same way, even granite. So with the Solaris line, what we did is we took the same 95% rocks to resin but we put a UV qualifier in our resin. And if I told you how we did this, I'd have to kill myself. But we have time tested this over 2000 hours in the hottest, coldest, wettest places on earth. So we were in Australia, we were on the shores of Israel. We were um, in the parts of the globe that have the most extremes. In Australia, it's incredibly cold and incredibly hot, all in the same place within a 24 hour cycle. So as I said, 2000 hours, we feel very confident about these products. And again, we, we won some awards at KBiz because it's really been a piece of the industry that's missing is to satisfy this exterior patio living arena space. And more and more people, especially with COVID, are thinking about how they can live happily within their scope. And so that pushes us into an outdoor arena as well. How do we make our outdoor living comfortable and social and resilient? Yeah, cer certainly a hot topic. I, mean, I see it on TV all the time. Everyone wants their outdoor kitchen living space. Uh, and I would really enjoy it now that we're in quarantine and getting a little bit more house and keeping the kids and everybody outside would be certainly nice right now. Um, I want to touch a little bit on the fabrication process because these are all very dense, hard materials. I can't just go out with a, a dry saw and just start hacking this stuff up now, can I? So really, the, the, there is a, a legitimate fabrication process and we, we welcome and we walk all of our clients through this as well. Um, they're very simple steps, but we partner with some really good fabricators here locally that know their stuff and have the right equipment and machinery. So there are plenty of guys that can cut the stuff, but what's it gonna look like? How are the seams gonna come out? What are the edge profiles gonna look like? And so really, yeah, I guess, walk us through some of those basics on the CNC machines and wet saws and polishing. So I'm gonna start this topic by saying, because I get this question often, I saw that NPR report on silicosis. Our fabricators are the only people that are going to have to address the silicosis issue. Um, Actually, Caesar Stone has taken a very, very hard tack on this, and we have now launched what's called Masters of Stone, which is actually a fabrication certification, because if you don't cut these wet, you run the risk of silicosis, which is these little quartz particulates getting into your lung, much like the asbestos issues that we saw in the 60s. So we are driving this home because people who are in this business need to protect both their business, but the people who work for them. And so these are mandates, not only by OSHA, but also by Caesar Stone. So the people that we certify have taken the Masters of Stone and are absolutely adamant about this process. So again, as Garrett was saying, we don't want to cut this dry. Part of it is you break your saw because there's so much tension in cutting something so dense and hard, it needs the wet lubrication to cut through it. But it also abets all of that silica that's going up. If somebody's jackhammering the road, that's the same silica. It's just this silica dust that's going out into the air. So nice thing about fabrication shops is they have reverse oxygen systems. So they're actually sucking this out they're usually using the masks that we're requiring now for COVID. So quite honestly, they're one of the safest facilities to be working during this crisis. And most of them have stayed open and pretty busy during all of this because they're very safe. Um, the process of fabrication is interesting because your clients are all different and they all have different kitchens. And so the first and foremost is we're going to template your space. The fabricator is going to come in, 
They're gonna make a space design of how you want it. You need to be on site for these because there's going to be seam placement. And if you have a very, very active product, and more than likely you have to have a seam, how are we going to do that? And if you don't have enough of a remnant to make that seam fluid, you're gonna to need to buy more material. So these are components of why you choose what you choose. Mother Nature is never gonna duplicate herself twice. So if you're talking about seams and edge details and all of this, how are you going to come off the edge with a product if you have a three centimeter product and you want a four inch drop, okay? So that then was a process called lamination where they take your three centimeter stone and they'd laminate it to another piece of stone and that'd be your edge drop. But obviously there's just two completely different looking stones, but even within a same stone, you could see that differential. So a lot of companies now go to mitered edges. So mitered edges are where they take the top face of the product, cut a 45 inch groove and drop it down. One of the reasons mitered edges are becoming increasingly popular is with all these different finishes, you need that top, you cannot duplicate that finish on the raw edge. These are special wheels, grinding wheels, and they're done in a factory. So with the mitered, I can get exactly the same finish going down the side, and I can make it long, as long a drop or not as I wish. And, I, and I've seen that used because these products you can use more than just your kitchen countertop or your, your bathroom area. I mean, I've seen them used on, um, in showers, as yeah. benches, you can have these drop down. So there, there are a lot of different things you can, you can do with them and have these different edge profiles. And we can get creative with using these on walls and other surfaces that aren't just a, a countertop. So keep that in mind as well. If you want something super durable, if you want just a clean line look or get rid of grout lines, any of those things, they're, they're all considerations. And again, it goes back to the process that, that we we're not selling anybody on any certain products, yeah. right? There are multiple ways to go about it. We're just trying to find the right solution for you. So there's pros and cons to all these different things. Which options are most important to you and then we're going to narrow that down so again it's, it's a great process um, I think we're all swelling with uh, knowledge right now so mm -hmm. I might cut you guys loose here uh, but we can have some follow-ups we do have some questions I think that popped up and we'll get to those uh, throughout the day if you think of anything else later on today tonight um, don't hesitate to reach out you know, we want to be that resource for you all of our showrooms have a very similar selection. As you can see, we have multiple different brands in addition to Caesar Stone, uh, you know, Cambria, Pentel, LG. There's a lot of options. And again, it comes down to more than just color. So there's a, a number of different considerations. Utilize our staff. We utilize awesome resources like Amy to find out the right information for you. And just again, to find the right solution to your needs. So there's a lot in, in the slag game. I think uh, counterintelligence, uh, we, we accomplished that today. Mm -hmm. There's probably more. We might have a follow-up. So again, if you have any questions, uh, any other last remarks or things that we didn't touch on today? No, but I, again, I think you need to really think about your bullet points in your life. What, what's important to you when you're making these big decisions? They're not inexpensive decisions and they will be for the duration of your home. And I don't think you, anyone is a bad choice. They just all come with different solutions. So I wish you well in choosing your solid surface countertop because it's beautiful and it's worth its weight in the look of your kitchen. And actually the value of your home is greatly enhanced when you put these products in. All right, well, thank you again, Amy. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Next week on Wednesday at 10, again, we will be back here. We're actually going to be in our Gresham location talking to Blade about cabinetry. So consider some questions for that. Definitely tune in. That is another wild world. Uh, and he's going to be our, our resident expert out of our Gresham store. So uh, until then, be safe, take care, wash your hands, stay six feet apart from each other, and uh, hopefully we'll, be, we'll all be able to go outside and hug each other very soon. So with that, take care, guys. Bye, everybody.